Everyone wants to know what lies ahead, but unfortunately one cannot see the future. But wait, why can't one? People can do it, at least that's what the people from today's stories think. This is Infinity, and in this episode you'll find out the prediction of a time traveler from 2033, as well as other amazing stories about those who have managed to hack time. Let's go! A certain man suddenly appeared on the social network, claiming to have come to us from the year 2033. The guy quickly gained popularity on the internet and showed curious footage. The time traveler attached a picture in which he showed what would happen to the United States in 10 years. He said that on the territory of America, there will be an unprecedented hurricane. The waves will rise up to 780 feet in height, but there will be no human casualties. The interesting thing about this case is that his picture was repeatedly subjected to checks and, oddly enough, all of them had passed successfully. Does this mean that the man could really fly to us from the future and warn us about cataclysms? Has the prediction come true? Another man who introduced himself on social media as a guest from the future once claimed that in 2023, in January, during an expedition in the Arctic Ocean, scientists would encounter something or someone incredibly frightening. To prove his point, the guy attached an unusual video in which the sounds of a deep sea creature growling can be heard. As you can understand, time has passed and no scientist has yet told the world about something like this, or maybe they decided to keep it out of the public eye. After all, the man warned of such a scenario that the scientist might start hiding this information from people. Judging by the results of the expedition, anything is possible. After an expedition to the ocean in January, a group of explorers brought in uncharacteristically little information. It was as if they were distracted by the study of something specific. Food for the future If you think that our descendants will eat hamburgers, chips, and other similar food, you're wrong. But don't get too excited, health-conscious consumers. There won't be vegetables in their diet either. The fact is that all food will suddenly be replaced by these capsules. One such capsule will be able to saturate a person for a whole day. A young man named Casper, who came to us from 2075, told scientists about this. He said that this innovative technology was shared with humans by aliens. Speaking of them, mankind will be friends with aliens already in 2028. Moreover, people will not just take pictures of them somewhere in the sky, meet them live and so on, but even exchange knowledge and get a serious boost in the development of medicine. Casper also said that in the coming years, the whole world will be waiting for the melting of the ice, which will especially affect the United States. However, if the time traveler survived this cataclysm and came to us from 2075, taking a jar of miracle food with himself, it means that modern people will be able to survive the flood. Do you think this story with the unusual food can be true? If you believe the guy's words, then all the citizens of the country will be supplied with it by the government. Everything would be absolutely free and, as I said, nourishing. On the one hand, that'd be really great. Free and super nourishing food? What could be better? But would people be able to give up the usual sweets, some snacks, tasty drinks, or just original dishes? Food has long been an important part of life that people certainly don't intend to forget. In any case, I'm waiting for your opinion on this in the comments. The Right Investment People always want to be richer. One of the best ways to do that is to make a smart investment that will bring you money for a long time. But finding such a gold mine is not easy. For the man in the following story, finding one was easy. Andrew Carlson invested 800 bucks, and two weeks later, he had more than $350 million in his account. The US authorities immediately noticed such an event in the world of economy and went to visit the mysterious man. He turned out to be completely unfamiliar with any financial rules, which made the government think he had bought information from some closed circles. This is a criminal offense, which caused Andrew to be arrested. While in court, the man stated publicly that he had not bought any data leaks and no one else had shared anything with him. He simply came to us from the year 2256 and knew about all the major events in the market. That's what allowed him to get rich so quickly. Of course, none of the jurors believed this version and Carlson ended up in jail. The man continued to ask people for help, making lucrative offers like, I'll share with you the coming world events and you let me go free. But none of Andrew's theories were heard by the top law enforcement officials. 
Not much time passed, and someone unknown posted $1 million bail for the man. After that, Andrew disappeared and was never seen again. Could it be that he went back to his present time? Stuck Between Worlds A young surgeon and a girl with a child were riding a train in their compartment when suddenly the carriage doors opened and a frightened man with eyes round with terror appeared in front of them. The stranger held a goose feather in one hand and a large leather wallet in the other. I am Minister Jorge de Balenciaga, he shouted desperately, and when he looked around in dismay and, lowering his voice, asked the shocked passengers pleadingly, where am I? His appearance terrified the people in the compartment, and the surgeon jumped up and began calling for help, looking for the conductor with other staff members. But as soon as everyone rushed there, no one was at the scene of the accident. The mysterious man was missing. If the story had ended there, it would have been forgotten, but the best part was just beginning. At the very spot where the mysterious stranger had been standing, the surgeon found his wallet and the feather that had fallen out in a hurry. These objects looked as peculiar as the stranger's clothes, so the surgeon decided to show them to historians. It turned out that both the feather and the wallet were made in the 18th century, but for some inexplicable reason, they were preserved in near-perfect condition. To make sure of everything completely, the man decided to find out if a man like Jorge de Balenciaga existed in the past. After spending a few days in the archives, he stumbled upon documents with a curious note from the then bishop's office, which showed that Minister de Balenciaga had actually lived, but had gone mad in his old age. The surgeon also learned from the archives that one night de Balenciaga was walking down an empty street near his home when suddenly his consciousness fell away and an iron long snake-like devil's carriage blazing with fire and smoke appeared before his eyes. The man was afraid to even look at it, but then he was teleported straight into it. Judging by the clothes of the people there, Jorge concluded that they were all Satan's minions. Losing control of his mind and body, de Balenciaga began to rush around the train cars and call for help when suddenly it hit him. Since he was in a real hell on earth, the best and most effective way to get out of it would be to recite a prayer. And as soon as Jorge uttered the first words, he was relieved and his consciousness returned to real life. If I were the surgeon reading the story, I would definitely believe in a time machine or something paranormal. Bad Landing Sometimes time travelers can literally fall down on us from heaven. It was 1996. It was an ordinary sunny day. A girl named Martha Crawford was doing her household chores when suddenly she heard a strange sound. At first, the woman didn't understand where it was coming from, but soon there were clearly no more options. It was the sound of the engine of a rapidly descending plane. Looking out the window, Martha realized she was right. In a few seconds, the pilot and his broken vehicle were in front of her. The woman immediately ran out of the house and ran in his direction, but not to provide first aid, but to criticize the pilot for choosing such an inappropriate landing spot. He ruined her lawn. The man, on the other hand, wondered how she could even talk about the lawn if he had just been literally fighting for his life. Listening to the story of how the pilot ended up here, Martha was horrified. According to him, he was a U.S. Air Force pilot, and his name was John Walker. His squadron came under surprise fire from German Messerschmitt aircraft over French territory. He and his comrades shot back, but then there were no more bullets left. He decided to ram the plane, and when his fighter jet collided with a German plane, John attempted to escape. He threw down the cockpit canopy, intending to jump out with a parachute, but lost consciousness in the same second. He woke up in the same plane a few feet off the ground. Using all his flying skills, John managed to land the plane on Martha's lawn. Well, if that had happened to me, I would have thought he was some kind of psycho and called the police. By the way, that's exactly what Martha did. The man was given first aid and then promptly admitted to a mental institution. But fortunately, the case wouldn't simply be hushed up. It had already reached the masses, which meant that there was a lot of interested people who wanted justice to be done. One of them was a reporter, James O'Hara, who pulled up the archives and found out that Walker's plane was indeed the property of the U.S. Air Force Squadron. On the day the pilot talked about, the entire squadron was destroyed, but the wreckage of John Walker's plane couldn't be found, so the pilot was considered missing for 50 years. Reporters even found the pilot's personal file and, looking at the photo in it, finally lost the power of speech. The men looked like two peas in a pod. Oddities in the Forest 
In 1901, two English women decided to go on vacation to France. They visited many sites, including the Palace of Versailles. After the main part of the tour was over, the girls decided to see the Petit Trianon, the palace located within Versailles, which King Louis XVI had graciously given to his wife, Marie Antoinette. On their way to the palace, however, the girls were lost in the forest. The silhouettes of two men flashed before them. They thought they were some kind of guards and immediately went to them to ask for directions. But then they were greatly surprised when they came closer. The two men were dressed in bizarre 18th century garb and also spoke in a completely incomprehensible ancient language. The oddities didn't end there. When the girls reached the castle unassisted, they found a bunch of people dressed in old-fashioned clothes speaking in an unfamiliar French dialect. It was as if they were dreaming. Somewhere among them, they caught a glimpse of a girl they recognized. As it turned out later, it was Marie Antoinette, the Queen of France, whose castle they had come to see. A few seconds later, the scenery changed completely, the strange vision disappeared, and the girls found themselves in a crowd of modern tourists. Yes, this story sounds frightening and just unbelievable in general. Do you think it could be true? Could the forest have teleported the two girls somewhere back in time? Or did they just decide to have fun that way and become famous? That's all, guys. Do you believe in time travelers? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and see you later.